So I am here with Jane Buresh of Creating Sparks. And her business, Creating Sparks, it focuses on combining happiness with spiritual practices and art to change lives. Uh, she uses tools like painting and storytelling and meditation to listen to your inner guidance. So I thought she was perfect because this month I am talking about how to break through mental blocks, um, which basically in layman's terms means a uh, procrastination that just won't quit. So um, she is going to walk us through her process for using um, watercolors and your intuition to help get your next steps to take whenever you are feeling stuck. Um, so Jane, you want to tell us just a little bit about, I guess, uh, let's start with the beginning of the process. Um, you said first we are going to set an intention and we'll yep. kind of show people how to do it. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. So um, an intention is really just focusing your thought on one thing because or asking one question, um, trying to get all the answers to your whole life at once is a little overwhelming. Setting an intention is kind of a big word that people use a lot, but basically it's like um, setting the scene sort of. So what do I need to do next? Or what do I need to learn about the situation? Okay, so what are you? what is your intention for this piece of fun art going to be? What is my next step? Okay, great. So what do we do now? All right. So this is just sort of an example. So I do, I write my question over here and then all this stays blank until I'm kind of deciphering. And then this is the painting side. So to start, I'm just gonna write, what is next step? So once I have my intention or my question, um, I just need to kind of calm myself down and get centered and in a state of open where I feel a little more playful and a little less like, ah, oh, I need the answers. Um, so usually I have kids running around, so I just do like three deep breaths and just try and feel all the tension leave my body and just clear my mind. And then I choose a loose medium. Um, that is what works best for me because I can't control it. Um, if I use something like a pen or a marker, something that is easier to control, I tend to try and control my lines and my marks. Um, but if I use like watercolor, um, so I use just the cheapo pans of watercolor and just pick randomly whatever color I'm gonna start with. And it's all by feel and just like intuitively feeling um, what I'm drawn to, what marks would feel good right now without trying to um, control what it should look like or, oh, I think my next step is social media so I'm going to draw a picture of a phone or something I, I don't do any of that it's just all it's all by feel and it's all just really kind of playing this is why I just do this in a notebook because I don't care about the paints they're nothing precious I don't care about the paper it's nothing expensive um, so it's really just letting things flow and just feeling what would feel good in the moment so I picked this pink color and then I just make shapes or lines. It really depends on what I'm feeling. So I'm just making shapes with no rhyme or reason and picking whatever colors I'm drawn to, changing them when I want to. And I just move around the page So I'm also layering and adding shapes and changing from line to shape to texture, kind of like dots or marks. How long do you usually do this for? 
you have a time limit or do you just go till you're done? I usually go till I'm done or sometimes if um, I just start to see something in it, um, I'll stop and um, notice what I'm seeing or notice what I'm sensing and that might be enough. If I'm not getting anything, I keep going not getting anything when I've filled the page, I go away and come back <laughs> and look at it with fresh eyes. And sometimes I have to remind myself, what was my intention? What am I doing? So that I re-trigger that subconscious part of my brain that starts making those connections with the shapes and what I was looking for. Um, what's my next step in my business um, in, the, in the product that I'm launching? Um, and then getting it out there. And when you, I start to see images and things and when I see them, I, I might put them in there. Sometimes I might resist it for a little while. And then if it doesn't go away, I'll still put it in there later. But at this point, I try not to, like I might make mental notes of thoughts that have popped into my head, but I try not to make full, judgment of oh this means this i didn't enjoy journaling for 30 minutes we get hand cramps really easily so yeah. i started doing that i wanted something i actually liked doing so i'm feeling done okay. <laughs> um and my papers the reason why I use this really cheap paper is I can't fuss with it too much because it starts to fall apart. So what, what is my next step? So I saw all of this like bold color and it's like a lot of movement, which I'm, it, to me, it seems like, you know, get busy doing what you got to do, like get it out there um, and be the bold colors to me is sort of like, you really got to be bold and and loud. So in that situation, like the putting it out there, taking all the steps to like be seen, the, the eye kind of fits with that as well. So be seen and don't be afraid of the judgment. So in this case, my what is my next step is kind of vague because I sort of knew what my next step was that I was resisting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so in this case, it's sort of the answer to the what is the next question, but it's also sort of the it kind of brought to my attention what my I'm procrastinating on is the fear of judgment and having it be seen because you know our creations are our little babies <laughs> right so no I, like my... a lot. I think that that's perfect even though it didn't necessarily answer your question it did in a roundabout sort of way your next step is to get over your fear of judgment and move on Right. And really put it out there. Quit hiding it. Yeah. Let it be seen. And like the bold colors is sort of like owning what I'm saying or being proud of what I'm saying and being a little more um, bold in believing in what I'm creating. And so that's why that the setting the intention is sort of like it can help you keep going back to that when you feel like you're distracted or you're not sure what you're making or doing. But it really just opens up a line of communication to what it is that you really need to hear. But then I was gonna also show you for examples. So there's been times where I don't get anything, where I'm just like, I don't know, that's a big mess of colors and weirdness. Um, so then I try and do like on this one, I do like a dialogue with the colors. So it's almost like, asking the individual colors, um, you know, what are you trying to tell me? Like, what's the pink make me feel? So like in this one, it was keep it easy and breezy because it's sort of like a playful color. So like when I was talking about this one, the really bright, bold pink is sort of like being seen, um, not hiding anymore. Same with the really kind of chartreuse yellow, green, yeah, so you're looking at not just the shapes and what you see in it, but also what the colors say. Right. 
And if you get patterns, sometimes I start making patterns. So then like um, in this one, the brown-ish green, um, it was the shapes that really spoke to me and they were more like the foundations. So this one was the foundations and building blocks, mm -hmm. um, developing those. The blue was these hurdles and like steps. Um, and this was a really specific question. So this was a, how am I going to attract people to my Creating Confidently course, which I didn't end up making. But <laughs> I had a whole conversation with myself about it though. Hey, and maybe that helped you decide it wasn't the right thing to make. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, all the information was sort of like, you're still growing, you're building foundations. Um, and it was a lot about like emotions and that has what is what's led me to the, the daily ups and downs and emotions that has led me to my next thing. Um, another thing that I found helpful when you're just not getting anything, you can do it for simple. And then when you give it a title, sometimes the title will help illustrate what it is that the image means to you. So like this one, yeah, all of, I didn't know what it was or what it was trying to tell me. But then once I gave it a title, it was like, oh, it's sort of like a barrier. So I called it the barrier. Um, and then I kind of jotted down little notes of what that means. Um, so this was like, all of these dots became all the little things to do. And then this was all the different directions and tasks. Um, and then these were the spikes in red or the negative beliefs or having to fight for success. So it's like once you start titling and um, figuring out what the individual shapes or colors mean, you start to have this full of what something as simple as that could mean for you. I just wanted to show kind of all the different ways that it can look. Yeah. And um, because sometimes it'll look like a sloppy mess of weird color and just how to make sense of that. And it's, um, it's like learning another language. It's just the more you do it, the quicker it becomes or the easier it is to see what something means for you.